at the end of this video you will be happy you watched because you are going to learn something new and i'm happy to bring in my favorite part which is the most likely topics topics that mostly drop during the WIAC physics exam with the sections you have the objectives the theory and then the practicals so with the objectives there are 50 questions with options a to d and they are mostly calculation and also diagrams you should be able to identify diagrams now the diagrams are mostly drawn you know in pen but one of the ways that you can understand what is actually going on when you see a picture of it or you see the actual thing you would have a deeper understanding into whatever you are studying now there are tables as well tables where you have to um, fill the blank spaces now the theory the theory is mostly calculations when you are in the basic school coming up really don't understand the practical side of the calculation now physics is such that if you don't know what's actually going on you might not be able to answer some standard questions and one thing i would say about the textbooks is that your textbook is incomplete without a past question because those who write the textbooks are not those who set the questions so if you study without the past question you might be understanding or maybe overstating because whatever textbook you might be using might be too high or might be too low but when you have the past questions with you you know that you have a standard and you are going to study based on that standard it means that what if whatever you are studying is a little bit low you would raise the dike for you to study more also um, you should be able to prove or derive a formula one thing i learned after school was when you're able to derive the formula you know what to do you know i was talking about the calculation once you can derive the formula no matter how the question is twisted you know how to manipulate the formula to get the answer so if you're a student who has been struggling with you know memorizing formula once you can prove it there's no need one thing i would say about physics is you should learn to draw you should be able to picture what is going on if you can picture what is going on you know what to do another thing about the calculation is that when you are given a question bring out the information from the question before you even state the formula bring the information out maybe they are giving you a mass they are giving you velocity they are giving you the angular velocity or anything bring that information out so maybe density density equals that mass equals that volume equals that when you have the information out you are ready you know when it's in the text whatever figures you have been given are in the text it becomes a little bit difficult for you to you know read through and sometimes you miss the most important part so read the question understand it then bring the most important information out which you will use during your calculation and then graph work very very important you should be able to sketch your graph know your x-axis y-axis you should be able to write your scale you should be able to identify where to put certain figures maybe 0.02 you should know that um, every big box on the graph sheet has 10 smaller boxes if you are using let's say one centimeter to one unit you should know that every small box is 0.1 you should also know how to explain and then describe certain occurrences because you can be asked questions on those things you have studied in the practicals you have alternative a b and c and you have laboratory apparatus you would have to be able to identify them when it comes to the practical aspect you can be asked to draw in the practicals and you should know your unit of measurement very very well because you can answer a question and if the unit is not correct you wouldn't be given the full mark after sketching the graph you are asked to find the slope now on this slope sometimes you can be asked to interpret what the slope is so you should be able to do that as well you can be asked to draw diagrams and then even definitions state definitions in the practical aspect now tips to pass physics theory start early and consistently review your study material almost every topic there's calculation so as a student you might spend so much time on the topics at the earlier years first year second year and you would miss the topics at the final year with physics it casts across right from the first topic to the last topic and i will urge you to stay with me because i will show you the topics that mostly drop use visual aids and then diagrams i already said that when a question is given to you try to sketch picture what is going on because sometimes if you can't picture the reality you will miss the point review underlying theory before diving into calculation most students are fond of you know just pick the figure put into the formula and just get your answer Back exam is a standard exam people write why exam to enter top universities and you know why i couldn't just give you a simple question for, so that you have your easy way out you know, most questions involve thinking you should be able to think it's not just about 
keeping all the information in memory you should be able to think about the thing you are studying you know if you can't think about it you don't know it one of the ways to know that you actually know something can you think about it when you mention simple harmonic motion can you think about it can you give a practical example in reality do you know a simple harmonic do you know a circular motion do you know rotational motion start answering basic questions before tackling complex ones now this is with when you are studying in a textbook the best thing you know authors should do is first questions should mostly be easy and then the difficulty level will keep increasing as you solve more questions but some textbook fall short of that and you see if you are a student and you are studying something on your own you play the first question you are not able to solve you think that you are not you are not good enough no no not at all so you should be able to get the right textbook you can get this from your tutors ask them for a good textbook and then they will be able to recommend good ones for you so that when you are learning you wouldn't think that i need to solve the complex questions to prove a point no you're not proving a point to anyone studying is beyond what you do in class actually after school that is when your real study should come into play because you know those who invented things in this world they had their their schooling in the classroom all right not all of them yes i'm very aware but after they left class that was when they are studying their learning actually began and then they they came up with a new invention they came up with understand formless by going through the proving process i already mentioned that reflect and learn from your mistakes very very important don't be afraid of making mistakes sometimes you can see a question you know like this question i can't tackle it no you need to be on the offensive approach this question tackle it because you wouldn't want to be like me where you saw a question and then you decide not to approach it or solve it you ended up finding that same question or similar one in the exam if you tried it and then you failed you would have gone to see your, your friend or your tutor to help you now feedback is very very important try to get feedback ask your tutor or your lecturer how you are going you don't know what you don't know until you are told so getting a feedback based on your performance is very very important if it's your weakness just focus on it and then uh, fuel it so that it becomes a strength everyone wants to hear something good about him or herself but you see you need to break that barrier clean up yourself be vulnerable and then you know where you are falling short so that you're able to do something about it when it comes to uh, drawing very very important now i urge students to always do diagrams or draw at the end of the question solving because with drawing you don't you don't need to really think much but when you are trying to answer a question that has a lot of text maybe you are defining or explaining you need to really be thinking um, i already mentioned graph and then the meaning of the slope now when it comes to the practicals your accuracy and precision in measurements is very very important you are liable to make errors but you see you should be a master of whatever instrument you are giving to use you should know how to use it you should have gone to the physics lab a number of times to you know do your practicals have your practical sessions so that you will be found wanting asking the latest questions you're not supposed to ask them during the the exam now this is my favorite part which is the why physics most likely topics so the first topic is scientific units and measurement we have particles in motion kinematics we have forces energy work power machines and engines heat now under heat we have temperature and its measurement measurement of heat energy and you have light fraction of light rays and then lenses sound waves electrostatics current electricity magnets and the magnets you have magnetic fields atomic physics and atomic physics then you have nuclear physics you know magnets atomic physics nuclear physics they mostly drop so they mostly focus on the topics that are ahead and mostly miss these topics and you have electronics click on the video floating on the screen so that you can have access to another video